Hello, and welcome to Knowledge Bits, the channel that breaks down scientific jargon into easy to understand knowledgeable bits. Today we're going to be talking about transcription factors, but first we must be able to understand some of the nomenclature that's used to describe the location of different transcription factors in different areas. So what does upstream and downstream mean? Well, it is used to establish a point of reference that standardizes among scientists so that one can speak to another and it's the same language. An easy way to remember it is that the five is bigger or higher so that you think of that as being upstream. Three is lower so you can think of that as being downstream. Remember, you must understand whether it's five prime or three prime to understand the orientation. On the top allele, the left side is upstream, the right side is downstream. On the bottom allele, the left side is downstream, the right side is upstream. You must know whether it's five prime or three prime. An example, if I was a scientist trying to convey where this transcription factor lies, I would say the transcription factor is upstream starting site. The numbers help to orientate even more specifically where the scientist is making a reference to. The plus one is typically give, given to one nucleotide to the left of the transcription starting site. To the left of this transcription starting site or TSS is negative and to the right it's positive. The numbers indicate how many nucleotides to which direction. So the transcription factor is four nucleotides to the left from reference points of the TSS. So, get it out of the way, I want to remind everybody that nucleotides are chemical compounds that have reactive properties. Oftentimes they're just annotated by lines and over time you may lose, unconsciously lose the fact that they're chemicals that have interactive properties. For example, different chemical bonds, as can see by an adenine and thymine forming hydrogen bonds. That's important to understand if when you're conceptually thinking of a double helix and how these transcription factors are able to bind onto the DNA. So what is a promoter? Well, a promoter is just a sequence of nucleotides that attracts specific transcription factors. And that transcription factor helps initiate the process of transcription by attracting RNA polymerase. And bringing back the analogy that these nucleotides have chemical properties, these are some of the transcription factors, or the proteins themselves have less relevancy, but I want you to understand how they can possibly be binding to these DNA strands. So what is an enhancer? Again, an enhancer is a set of nucleotides that attracts specific transcription factors that help the promoter start transcription. It enhances the ability for the promoter to bring an RNA polymerase to start transcription. Something extremely interesting is that an enhancer doesn't have to be near a promoter. It can be as far as a 100,000 nucleotides away from the transcription starting site. And they're thought to interact with the promoter regions by physically reorientating the DNA so that it folds itself into itself, so that it's easier to, to undergo DNA replication, as can be annotated by the second figure. Understand that DNA is highly mobile and these proteins can bring upon other transcription factors and helps fold the DNA so that there is better transcription. So silencers and reporters. A silencer is just, again, another sequence of nucleotides that, it, that attracts specific repressors which prevent DNA replication. Silencers can be thought of the opposite as enhancers. They can be found up or downstream on a gene, and they're also thought to interact with the promoter by inhibiting transcription factors from binding. Simply put, a silencer is a sequence of nucleotides that attracts specific repressor proteins. An enhancer is a specific set of nucleotides that attracts specific activator transcription factors. One promotes transcription, one represses transcription. An operon. This system is found particularly in bacteria and is very rare in humans, but oftentimes it gets confused as an operon with a promoter. An operon is specific to a bacterial system. An operon is just a cluster of genes that are under the control of a single promoter. For example, this promoter controls these structural genes. It is a much more simplistic transcriptional regulation than is found in eukaryotes. If you got any value from this content or thought that we did a good job, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment with the next video idea. Thank you so much for joining us and until next time.